Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial video on creating pivot charts in Excel. Now pivot charts are one of the key utilities in the data analysis group of Excel tools and they really help you understand your data in a visual way. So for example, I have a large data set just here and I want to analyze it using certain filters. And that is where pivot charts come in. So in this video, I'm just really gonna walk you through the process of creating a pivot chart. I'm gonna show you some basic techniques for formatting your pivot chart. We're gonna add interactive elements like slices and timelines, and I'm gonna show you how to update your pivot charts. I have a reasonably large data set just here. If I press control down arrow to jump to the last row, you'll see I have 21,574 rows of data. So fairly sizable. If I press control up arrow again, it's gonna take me up to that first row. Now this is sales data for two stores in the UK and I want to do various different analysis on this data. Now something that's really important when you're analyzing data prior to putting your data into anything like a pivot chart or even a pivot table, it's very important to make sure that your data is clean. Now what I mean by clean data is that you've done things like removed blank rows from your data, removed duplicates, that you've checked for spelling errors, you've checked to make sure the data is consistent in its case, and also that you have the correct formatting applied to the different columns. So for example, in column H, if I highlight it, that's showing me it's accounting format, which is the correct format for this column. Now it's so important to do this step because what happens is if you have inconsistent data, any analysis that you do after that is probably gonna be inaccurate. So learning some basic tips and tricks in Excel for cleaning data is a really important thing to have in your Excel toolkit. Now I'm not gonna go through cleaning data in this video, but the data that we are going to put into this pivot chart has already been cleaned. I know it's consistent. Another little tip is always put your data in a table. And it's gonna become apparent why this is so important and why it's gonna make your life so much easier when we get towards the end of this video. So to put this data in a table, I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked in it, press Control A to highlight everything. On the home ribbon, I'm gonna to go to format as table. And I'm gonna select one of these table options. Now it doesn't really matter which one you select. I'm gonna say yes, my table has headers and click on okay. So my data is now in a table and there's a couple of ways I know that it's in a table. Firstly, if I glance up at my ribbons, I can now see that I have access to the contextual ribbon called table tools. Contextual ribbons are ribbons that only appear when you need them. And this table tools ribbon has a design sub ribbon. So the next thing I'll always do is in this design ribbon, in this first group, the properties group, I give my table a name. And I'm gonna call this sales data and hit enter. So now my data is pretty much ready to put into a pivot table or a pivot chart. So I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked within my data, jump up to that insert ribbon, and in the charts group in the middle, we have an option for pivot chart. Now at this point, you can choose to create a pivot chart and a pivot table, or you can just create a pivot table on its own. But even selecting this option, it essentially does create a pivot table for you as well. So let's say pivot chart. So now we have this create pivot chart dialog box. And the first thing we're being asked is to select a table or range. So basically Excel is asking, where is the data that you want me to use in this pivot chart? Now, if you've put your data in a table and you've named that table, Excel will pick up the table name and place it into that field as it has done here with the sales data table. If you hadn't named your table, you could go in and select the cell range where your data is located. Now, the next thing I need to select is where my pivot chart is going to be placed. And as a general rule, I always advise people to make sure that you keep your raw data and any analysis that you're doing, any pivot tables, pivot charts, anything along those lines on a separate tab. So I'm gonna say new worksheet and click on okay. So now what I get is a new worksheet I have a blank pivot table on the left-hand side, a blank pivot chart in the middle, 
And then I have my pivot chart fields over on the right hand side. And these pivot chart fields are basically the column headings from your raw data. And the way that you build a pivot table or a pivot chart is that you drag and drop these fields into one of these four blank areas below. You can see we have filters, legend, axes, and values. Now a good place to start is that in the values area, always put your figures, your numbers. So in my case, that is the sales column. So I'm gonna drag that down to values. So currently, my pivot chart is updated. It's just showing me a total of all sales. Not too helpful at the moment. What I want to see is I want to see all of the sales broken down by manager. So I'm gonna grab the manager field. I'm gonna drag and drop it into axis. So you can now see that all of my managers are listed underneath and I can see the total sales broken down by each manager. Now if I decided that I didn't quite like that format, I could grab this manager field and possibly drag it over to legend. So now my data is displayed in a different way. I have the manager names in the legend area and they're all color coded and you can see what they relate to with regards to sales. Now I'm gonna drag manager back to axes and I might want to add in a third field. So I'm gonna grab store and I'm gonna drop that down into legend. So now I can see my two stores, Computech and Microworld listed in the legend. I've got my managers across the bottom and I can see the total sales broken down by store. So what you want to see determines where you place these fields in the different areas. Now there's one other area we haven't looked at and that is the filters area. So I could drag town down into filters and what I get is at the top of the pivot table over here is I get this little filter drop down. So if I now want to see just the sales figures for London, I can select London, click on OK. My pivot chart and my pivot table are going to update. Now if at any point you want to remove one of these fields, you can just click on it and drag it outside. So very, very simple. I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna remove store from columns and I'm gonna remove manager and I'm gonna replace it with category. So now I can see all sales broken down by category. And that is basically how a pivot chart works. Super flexible, allowing you to change your mind, change the analysis and gain deeper insights on your data. Now at the moment, my pivot chart, it looks okay, but it could be a lot better. And that is where our pivot table tools come in. So if I click on my pivot chart, you'll see at the top, I have a contextual ribbon pivot chart tools with three sub ribbons, analyze, design, and format. Now let's jump onto the design tab for one moment. So from here, I can do things like change the chart style. So maybe I want a slightly different style or a slightly different look and feel to my chart. And I think I'm gonna select that one, style eight. I could also choose to change the colors. And you can see here, I have a selection of palettes. And at the moment, these are based on the theme I have in Excel. So I could select this uh, monochrome palette two. Now it's worth noting that if you want to change these bars to a color that isn't listed in this change colors area, you can very simply do that by clicking on one of the bars, that's gonna select them all, go up to the format ribbon, and you can then go in and you can shape fill in whatever color you want. I'm gonna jump back to design. You can do things like change the chart type. So if I decide that I want a line chart as opposed to a column chart, or maybe I want a bar chart or a pie chart, I can definitely do that as well. Now, some other things in here which don't look quite right, you can see here I have a chart title, which currently just says total. Now, if I click on chart title, you'll see that that really is just a text box. So I can double click and I can edit it to say sales by category. And if I wanted to change the font on this, again, I can select the text box. I can go to my home ribbon and I can just change my font as normal. 
I can drag any of these text boxes up and down or side to side just to position them where I want them to be. And it also might be that I want to add some additional chart elements. So let's click on the pivot chart, go to design, and the first button we have here is to add a chart element. And you can see in there we have chart title, data labels, data table, grid lines, legend, all kinds of different things. Now for my particular pivot chart, I want to add some axes titles. So I'm going to say primary horizontal. And you'll see I get this little text box. So I'm going to highlight it and change that to category. And I'm going to drag that down a little bit. I'm going to go back to add chart element, axis titles, primary, vertical. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to say sales. Now, something else I have on here is I have a legend. Now, this legend isn't particularly helpful on this pivot chart. It just says total. It's not showing me anything that I need to know. So I'm probably going to want to remove that legend. A couple of different ways that you can do it. Again, this is just a text box. I could delete it out. Alternatively, I could go to Add Chart Element, go down to Legend and select None. Or if I don't want to reach over across my ribbon that far, I have a useful little plus button at the side of the pivot chart where I can go in and just turn that legend off. I can resize my pivot chart just by dragging the handles. And if I have no use for these grey filter buttons, I can remove those buttons from this chart by right clicking and saying hide all field buttons on chart. So now we have something that's labelled and it looks a lot cleaner. And you may want to go in and jig around with some of these text boxes to get them exactly as you want them to be. A couple of other things with these chart elements. If I go down to something like data labels, I could choose to display the actual data within the chart. So here I'm saying display the data labels in the center. I could say inside end, inside base, outside end, so on and so forth. And every single element of your chart can be formatted. So depending on where you're clicked, you can format or change the color or do whatever you like with any area of your chart. So if I click on this kind of background area, go up to format, you can see in this first group, it says current selection plot area. So you can select different areas of the chart by just selecting from this drop down. So if I select chart title, it's going to select the chart title. Chart area is going to select the whole thing, so on and so forth. So if I want to format the plot area, I just select it. I can go to shape fill and I can maybe fill that in with a slightly different color. So really simple to use those pivot chart tools to format your pivot charts. Now, another thing you might want to do is you might want to add some interactive elements into your pivot charts. So again, I'm clicked on my pivot chart. And this time, if I go up to the analyze ribbon, I'm going to insert a couple of slices. Now, if you're not sure what a slicer is, it is basically a way of filtering. And it's a really nice visual way of filtering that's easy for everybody, no matter what skill level they have in Excel to use. So I'm going to add a filter for town and manager and click on OK. And it gives me these really nice little panes or panels, which I can organize and place wherever I want. And using these, I can filter my pivot chart. So if I just want to see all of the sales by category, but only for London, I could just click on London. And you'll see that my pivot chart updates. If I want to select multiple towns, I just hold down my control key and select any additional towns. And again, my pivot chart is going to update. I then might want to see it filtered by a specific manager. So maybe I'm only interested in the data for Ben Malone. Or maybe a couple of other managers. 
So it's a really nice way of quickly being able to filter your data. Now, slicers come with their own contextual ribbon. You can change the color of them. You can do lots of different things with your slicers. So definitely something to check out. Now I'm going to clear these filters just by clicking on the clear filter button on the top of these slicers. Now there is one more slicer that you can insert and that is called a timeline slicer. So if I jump back up to analyze, you'll see we have insert timeline. Now timelines are slicers, they are filters, but they only filter for dates. So if you have a column in your raw data that contains any kind of date and that column, more importantly, is formatted as a date column, then that's what's going to show when you click on insert timeline. So you can see I only have one column that shows months, so I'm going to select it, click on OK, and I get my timeline slicer. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and I'm going to move it down here. And I'm going to resize it out. So now if I wanted to see all the sales by category for the months of June, July and August, I can use my timeline slicer just to select those months. Or if I want to see it for January, February, March, I can do the same thing and select those. So it's still a slicer, but it only works with dates. And I'm going to clear that filter as well. Now, the final thing that I think is important to show you in this short video is how your pivot charts update. So if we jump back to our data, it's more than likely that your data is going to be updated from time to time. So these are sales figures. So it might be that next month I add that month's sales figures into the bottom of this table, and then I want my pivot chart to update to include that new data. Now, this is why it's really important to put your data into a table, because what will happen if I just show you very quickly, and I'm just going to add a new row here by copying the above data down, is that because it's in a table, the table expands to accommodate the new data that's going into the table. And because the pivot chart is taking its information from the sales data table, it's going to include this new information. Now, when it comes to the sales, I'm going to make this a pretty big number, just so it's very obvious when it updates. I'm going to say 1 million. So now I've added my data into the bottom. I want to update my pivot chart. I'm going to jump back. All I need to do is click on my pivot chart, go to the Analyze ribbon, and in this data group, you'll see we have a refresh and a refresh all. So I'm going to say refresh. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but accessories jumped way up because of that new data that I've added. So super simple to keep everything nicely up to date without having to expend too much effort. So that's it. That is the basics of creating a pivot chart. We've seen how to create one from scratch. We've seen how to utilize the pivot chart fields. We've seen how to manipulate what we're seeing by moving those pivot chart fields. We've done some basic formatting on our charts. We've added interactive elements like slices and timelines, and you've seen how to update your charts when the raw data has been modified. I hope that helps you out. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.